Well, welcome. Uh, I wanted to speak with you uh, just a little bit about this service uh, known as Tenebrae. Uh, it means shadows are darkness. Uh, I title this little video uh, something to do with, um, you know, into the storm, because that's one of the things that we are, are reflecting about is this service, which by tradition was offered in the monasteries, as an all-night vigil, and all-night liturgy, I believe it was generally uh, on Monday, Thursday. Um, it was, this has been compressed, if you will, for uh, parish churches and cathedrals. And uh, it, it's not celebrated now by, uh, well, I mean, it may be by monks elsewhere, but within Anglicanism, uh, we are not celebrating it generally on Monday, Thursday, because our principal service that day is the Maundy service uh, liturgy, uh, follow, you know, with the foot washing, the institution of the Eucharist, the priesthood, the commandment to love uh, as we have been loved, um, to, to love as Christ loves. And ultimately, um, it ends with the stripping of the altar and then in some parts of the tradition, uh, a vigil uh, before the altar repose where, where Christ has been taken away, so to speak, and, and we hold vigil until uh, basically Easter. Uh, there, there's service, of course, on Good Friday, uh, but there's no more celebration of the Eucharist. The, the last celebration of the Eucharist is on Maundy Thursday and uh, not to be celebrated again until either the Easter vigil uh, Saturday night, which is technically Easter morning, uh, or Easter uh, day proper. But that's, that's that background, but Tenebrae. So we don't generally celebrate Tenebrae on Maundy Thursday, but it's been transferred to Wednesdays. And of course, it's not a monastic office now, so it's been abbreviated and it allows for shortenings and so forth. And so uh, we do that uh, to make it uh, something that you're not literally spending all day and all night with. Uh, that's just not practical for the parish church setting. Uh, that being said, what is it? Well, it's a series of readings. It's a series of readings, and you see behind me what looks like a candelabra. It's from the floor up to my height. And uh, it has a very strange name, but it's an appropriate name. It's called a hearse, just like the funeral home uses, a hearse. And this, special, uh, this specialized uh, candelabra, the hearse, has candles lit on it. And there's one in the center, sort of like a Christ candle. And then there are candles on either side. And as the readings are finished, each section is finished, a candle is extinguished. And it ends with one candle remaining, and that's the candle that symbolizes Christ. And then something interesting happens in that. Um, there's another final reading, uh, very moving, very evocative, uh, these passages. And then there's an extremely loud noise. So much so that if your heart doesn't stop, if you don't jump out of your pew or out of your seat at your home... Um, then we haven't made the noise loud enough for you. And the candle you see is taken away, and then the loud noise occurs. And it symbolizes the closing of the tomb of Christ. It symbolizes the rolling of the stone where it goes thud, and the tomb is sealed, and Christ's body is sealed within it. And then it awaits and so it's, it's called shadows or darkness because we go from light and the light of Christ until what appears liturgically as the cross of Christ taking him to the grave, to burial, uh, to the end, or what looks like the end. You know, Good Friday is only good because of what happens on Sunday. Well, this service is that that really suddenly brings the uh, season uh, to the beginning and sets the tone. I mean, we thought we had set the tone at, at, um, at Palm Sunday, but it really sets the tone of entering in and contemplating the way of the cross, everything that Christ has done, is doing, everything that God has done for the, his love for the world. Uh, you know, there's that saying uh, that, that says, you know, grace is not cheap. Um, it, it, it costs... God, his son. It cost Jesus his life. And a cynic might say, well, he, he, he's God. He rose again. He was also fully human, and he endured that torture and that, that pain 
as any human would do, but I dare say the greatest torture would be the infliction of God's righteous wrath on the evil of sin that Jesus took upon himself on the hardwood of the cross. And I can't even begin to contemplate uh, what that would feel and, and look like. Uh, but I think that's, you know, as, as agonizing as torture can be, um, I, I can't think of anything greater than, than the wrath of God upon me for all of humanity. Those born in the past, those alive presently, those to be born, all of us, for each and every one of us nail, uh, the, nail Jesus to the cross through our sins. And thanks be to God, he is resurrected. So this service has that odd ending of taking us to the tomb, it being sealed shut, and we depart in silence. Now, thank you, Jesus, it's not the last liturgy by any stretch. We, we have Monday, Thursday tomorrow. But this is one that reminds us that it's not, oh, it's not a fancy presentation. It's not getting the sermon done. It's, it's not putting on a show. It's, 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 not, the, it, it's not the Easter bunny. It, it's, it's the love of God. And, and so I invite you to, to consider Tenembrae, shadows. It's not a fun service. It is probably the most evocative liturgy you will ever attend, whether you're at home or live, because um, it, it really just strips it bare. I know the stripping of the altar is also evocative and moving, and so we're not in competition with liturgies. But I, I, will, I, will, I will try to quote the person who really introduced it to me through, through reading that, that I read, uh, Ken Collins, I think is his name, and, and he, I thought, very honestly and appropriately said when he was first exposed to Tenebrae, he absolutely hated it. And then, as he contemplated, as he thought, he realized the beauty behind it. Because behind that is the love of God. And, and it strips away all the niceties. You know, we, we, carry, we, we carry crosses around. We, we, we make them of brass, gold, silver. We, we make them with wood. We wear them. We make them with stone. We have crosses everywhere. And they're so pretty. And that's the last thing that a cross really is. The, the only thing that makes a cross beautiful, of course, is to know that Jesus defeated it. But it is a symbol of death, torture, embarrassment, shame, and all that this tenebrae service sort of brings us into the mode to contemplate that grace is not cheap. God's love costs him everything. But my friends, the beauty is his grace is so free. What breaks my heart are the people who just will not accept Jesus. They will not do it. And it breaks my heart. Today on Spy Wednesday, our hearts should be broken for Judas Iscariot. He walked with Christ. He, he had more than one meal. I mean, he, he was with Jesus a, a lot during those three years of ministry here. He ate with him. He listened to his teachings, and he betrayed him. And my friends, um, it's, it, it, it's Holy Week. It's time for Tenembrae. Join me. You'll find it a challenge. You'll find it a blessing. God bless you. And uh, I hope to see you uh, when we actually broadcast the Tenebrae Liturgy. And I look really forward to seeing you for Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and boy, oh boy, for Easter. It's coming. Thanks be to God. And in this season with the corona, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that Easter where we are free, free, and free. But remember this, you and I are already free in Christ. And that's the most important freedom. By his blood, you and I are free. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And I hope you will find Tenembrae the blessing that I have found it in my life. Thank you.